Greetings, my name is John Gabriel and this is the New Calculus Channel. So today I want to discuss uh, an old debate that took place between me and Anders Kaysorg, a master graduate of MIT University. And I will refer to the file where the discussion is and tell you the conclusion of the matter, which is quite interesting. And I think I've covered this before, maybe a couple of times, but it again resurfaced in my conversations with Sci.Map. So let's begin. Now, in a recent, there's this incorrigible troll who also claims to have a master degree in mathematics uh, from Sweden. His name is Zelos Malum. And so, it's quite interesting, as he tells me here, as always, you fail to understand what circular means. But tangent in mainstream calculus, which is bogus, is defined as you see here. Okay, in other words, a tangent line function is equal to f prime of c, where c is the, the point of tangency, c, c whatever, c f of c, or c f prime of c. And you end up with this, right? So how... Now, how is that circular? Well, it's circular because f prime of c is equal to this, isn't it? Right? And here we don't even have to worry about a limit, by the way, because this is a straight line. Okay? So the most laughable part here is that the limiting process does not even apply. Mainstream baboons like to think of it as this. But this here is circular because you need to know L. And why you need to know L, well, we'll see in a moment. But the above difference quotient is meaningless unless it is already assumed that a tangent line is possible at, S, at x is equal to c. So as you can see, it's not I who lack the understanding. I understand mainstream calculus better than any professor of mathematics on the planet. There's not a single mathematics educator who understands calculus as well as I do. In fact, the last 400 years, there has not been my equal. And I'm not saying that arrogantly. It's, it's a fact, uh, people. I'm just being factual. That's all. <clears throat> Does it make me great? Who knows? But in any case, it doesn't earn me any money. And I may very well be on my last stretch. So... Let's go to the discussion with Anders Kessel. So in about 32 pages on a site called Quora, we've been going back and forth here, and I want to get down to the Denouement, so to speak. So <laughs> uh, the Denouement comes at this point here where I said to Kessel, I too understand mainstream arguments. That wasn't the issue. But to use a construct like you see here, fx minus l, you need to know l, okay? And as I pointed out to this poor moron on this case, or you cannot find l without guessing it or through an invalid method called the first principles method, okay? The first principle method means uh, the epsilonix definition. This, this definition down here, so I don't know why it's highlighting the wrong one. When I'm, when I'm moving my... My, my mouse, my pointing device. So this here is the epsilonic def definition. So you cannot assume that the derivative is 2x, which is equal to L, uh, because in order to do so, you already used the finite difference quotient without the limit and performed invalid arithmetic on several occasions. But you're telling me, in effect, that it's fine because your first principle, because your flawed first principle method um, allows you to check it later using epsilon delta arguments. Now, while it's true that you can check it using epsilon, epsilon delta arguments, that was never really the crux of this argument. The crux of this argument was that you, the mainstream doesn't have a valid way of finding it. As I have pointed out, the new calculus does have a valid systematic way of finding it without using limits or infinity, or infinitesimals, or any of that other nonsense. So then he says, and this is the guy, why can't you understand the difference between assuming that f prime of x is equal to 3x squared? Now notice, he, he later says, I absolutely cannot and did not assume 
f prime of x is equal to 3x squared. Okay, this is a master math graduate from MIT, people. Okay, so he says, assume it as a fact. Now, I don't know about you, but assuming anything as a fact is very dangerous in any theory, as far as I'm concerned. In fact, there is no room for assumptions in mathematics. There are no axioms or postulates in sound mathematics. And I'll place a link to a proof of that in the details section. So he says, as a fact upon which to build further proofs and hypothesizing that a prime of x might equal to 3x squared. Well, I don't have to guess and I don't have to faff around and, and assume anything. I know that I can find it in a valid systematic way. And I, my historic geometric theorem of 2020 does that for you using your very own Newtonian Leibnizian difference quotient. Okay, so I've given you a valid way. What have I gotten for it? Absolutely nothing. My historic geometric theorem uses the Newtonian finite difference quotient. Okay, but my new, my new calculus is far more rigorous because it doesn't uh, have the, uh, the certain flaws of the mainstream calculus, such as <laughs> a tangent line at a point of inflection, which is absolutely impossible because you have to... Uh, break away from the original definition of tangent line in order to use that and you introduce the circular limit definition which you commonly use as your derivative then he says i absolutely cannot and did not assume that and i can hypothesize whatever i want for any reason or no reason precisely because i treat the hypothesis as as nothing more than i hypothesize until it is regularly rigorously proven now this is the problem people you see this here that you see in front of you is that famous first principles definition. Now, yes, some of you might argue that you can't express epsilon as a function of delta. You can, by the way. I proved that you can and vice versa, but I'm not going to argue about that. Now, you have to know the value of L. So systematically, there's no way you can find the derivative in your bogus calculus. Okay. It never was. Nobody before me actually solved the tangent line problem. I was the first to solve the tangent line problem. Don't you think that's worth a number of able prizes on its own? I, I do. I really do. <laughs> but guess what? I'm not, I'm not recognized. I'm not awarded anything. I'm called a crank and a crackpot, and I'm hated because I expose mainstream ignorance on a grand scale. Now, I am a genius, and that's not boasting. It's, you know, it's just a fact. Uh, I'm being honest. I would be a liar like most of you if I said I'm not a genius. I am a genius, okay? And I've made it possible for even high school students to learn calculus in the space of just a few months. They don't need to take uh, an entire lifetime, several years and an entire lifetime to master like the morons of mainstream mathematics. You can do everything with the new calculus that you can do with your bogus calculus and much, much more. Believe me, okay? Well, I'm sorry, don't believe me. Examine and study my claims. So, I'm really out of breath right now. There have been uh, fires in the western United States and the mid-United States, and they've sent me into a tailspin. I was trying to get off my steroids, my inhaled steroids. Now I'm back on steroids, and I'm suffering like you cannot imagine. I struggle to take every breath have been vaccinated so i'm pretty certain that if this virus finds me it's gonna wipe me out because i don't think i'll be strong enough to to withstand it well if you haven't been vaccinated my recommendation is that now is the time for you to do it and uh i'll uh Try to be in touch with you again soon. Take care, everyone. My name is John Gabriel, and this is a new calculus channel. Till next time, goodbye.